Hello Viet TV, welcome to the Wealth Expert Show, the show where we teach you how to make the best use of your money to reach your goals in the most efficient way possible. I'm your host and wealth advisor, Mitchell Huy. I may look young, but don't let that fool you. I have two bachelor's degrees from the University of Toronto, one in commerce, one in science, an MBA from the Schulich School of Business specializing in financial management and several years of financial industry experience. Think of me as your financial GPS. If you know where you want to go, I can get you there. Why are we discussing money? Because money is one of the greatest tools that we have and most of us are not using it properly. Money is a good servant, but a bad master. Instead of working for money, we should be putting money to work for us. Now, we are able to focus on the more important things in life, such as health, hobbies, family, and friends. Each week, we explore different topics and answer your email questions from the differences between RRSPs and TFSAs, planning for retirement, buying your first home, using RESPs to save for your children's education, using insurance to protect yourself and your family, tax-efficient investment strategies, estate planning, and so much more. In today's episode, we will discuss the differences between investment products. These are the tools we will use to achieve financial independence, whether that means retiring early, paying off your mortgage, or putting your children through school without any debt. When talking about money and financial planning, we need to understand inflation. Inflation is your money's greatest enemy. Inflation causes the value of your money to decrease. The easiest way to understand this is that for today, for $10, you can buy 20 apples. Next year, for that same $10, you can only get 19 apples. The message, inflation eats away at your money. And if your money isn't growing, you are losing money, guaranteed. There are a variety of assets you can place your money in. We will specifically discuss the differences and benefits between cash, GICs, bonds, precious metals, mutual funds, ETFs, and stocks. Cash is exactly as it sounds. It is keeping your money somewhere that is easily accessible, whether it's under your mattress or in a bank account. It's pretty much the same. Is your money going to grow? No. Is it convenient? Yes. End of story. GICs are Guaranteed Investment Certificates. These are similar to cash, except you're required to lock in your money for a specific amount of time. GICs are a safe way to save money because your initial investment is protected. It locks away your money for a period of time and banks will compensate you with a low interest rate, which for the most part is below inflation. Imagine sending your money to jail for a number of years and your money is working at a rate of 10 cents an hour. Is your money growing? Hardly. Is it convenient? Absolutely not. Your money is in jail. It is locked away. GICs generally have more drawbacks than benefits. However, they are marginally acceptable in some cases. Bonds are similar to GICs in that they offer a fixed rate of return for a set period of time with principal protection. These generally have higher interest rates than GICs. Although bonds guarantee your principal, your money is still at risk of the bond issuer going bankrupt and defaulting on their loan payments. Bonds are great for regular interest payments. However, interest income is fully taxable, which decreases their relative return. We won't be speaking much about gold and precious metals specifically on this show, aside from how you can gain exposure to them and invest through funds. Mutual funds are a portfolio of bonds, stocks, or other investable assets that are selected and managed by a professional on behalf of many investors like yourselves. 
These fund managers pick and choose the best assets to include in their fund according to the fund mandates or goals. These funds are usually managed in a tax-efficient manner. However, the drawback of having professional management is that management expense ratio, also known as MER. These expense fees reduce your gains on the funds. Bottom line, is your money going to grow? Yes. Is it convenient? Yes. Do I need to lose sleep at night? No. These funds are professionally managed by the best in the business. ETFs or exchange traded funds track an index, commodity, bonds or basket of assets like an index fund. Unlike mutual funds, an ETF like a common stock trades on the stock exchange. Since ETFs follow an entire index, they typically have lower fees than mutual funds as they are not actively managed. Bottom line, is your money going to grow? Yes. Is it convenient? Yes. Do I need to manage my ETFs by myself? Unfortunately, yes. This is one of the drawbacks of a lack of a professionally managed portfolio. Equity investments usually refer to buying and holding of shares on a stock market of a particular company in hopes of gaining from dividends and capital gains from stock increases. These investments are great for the savvy investor since you can pick and choose the exact company you want to invest in. Bottom line, unless you know what you're doing, it is probably best to leave this to the professionals. That in a nutshell are the investment products that are available to the average investor. So which one of these is the best place to put your money? The answer is it depends on your risk tolerance and timeline, which we will discuss in future episodes. However, any questions of where you should be investing your money long term can be answered by this graph. This graph tracks the performance of $1,000 invested in different asset classes from 1926 all the way to 2014, with the different lines representing the different asset classes. That $1,000 invested in the market, which is stocks, mutual funds, and ETFs, turned into just over $410,000. $410,000. While that same amount invested in bonds grew to a measly $6,800. Cash, GICs, and gold? The two lowest lines on this graph. Do we even need to waste our time speaking about them? I think not. Time is money, and there is no money to be found there. People often ask me, but what about the financial crisis of 2008? We might lose all of our money. My answer? not if you invest wisely and for the long term. If we take a look at 2008 when the huge subprime mortgage crisis happened and a lot of the big banks in the US were being bailed out, we notice this dip here in the blue stocks line. However, by 2010 we observed that the market has recovered all of its losses and continued to gain year over year. This leads us to question, why are so few investors in the markets if we know that over the long term, markets have always gone up significantly? $410,000 or $6,800? I know where I'm putting my money in the markets. More on this later in our episodes. Next week, we look at the basics of financial planning. How do you achieve your financial independence along with other goals along the way? Most people think that financial planning is putting aside a couple hundred dollars every month into their RRSPs and TFSAs. Although putting money aside is good, this is not a plan. A plan involves specific goals and milestones quite similar to a business plan or roadmap. You need to know what you want and save towards that goal. Want to retire in 10 years? Great! How much money do you need to retire comfortably? 
How much money do you need to invest to get there? How is this going to affect your current lifestyle? These are all the questions we need to answer. So tune in next week as we explore the world of financial planning. In our next episode, we will go through a sample financial plan to demonstrate the effectiveness of a real plan. I look forward to all of your email questions. Have a topic you would like me to discuss on the show? Or need a financial plan done for you and your family? Or just want some investment advice? Contact me at any time at mitch at wealthexpert.ca. Thank you to all of our viewers and see you next time on Viet TV's Wealth Expert Show.